Hello, welcome to Loving Yourself, episode 10. Hallelujah. You're welcome once again to Loving Yourself, episode 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is our episode 10. We've been on for 10 good weeks. And God has been faithful. Hello, friends. Hello, viewers. How are you doing? It's a beautiful week. How is your week going? I want to wish you a happy new week in this month of March. And I'm, I, I hope and I know that you're having a lovely time despite the weather. Just as one of um, NK Song says, no matter the weather, I'll praise you, I'll serve you forever. Always look for um, something to be grateful for. If you don't have any reason to be grateful or to be thankful, whenever you wake up from sleep, just look up. As inhale, as hell, and say, Lord, I thank you that I'm alive. Thank you for the breath of life. Every new day is an opportunity and a privilege to be grateful to God that gives us life. So once again, how is your week going? I'm so happy that you're here with me on this show. And I promise you, if you stay to the end, you will not regret it because God has something amazing to say. Hallelujah. Okay. It's loving yourself. It's loving yourself. It's loving yourself. And um, I'm your host. My name is Sweven Kajima or Barinemi Paul Obele, and I'm happy to be here with you. And um, I want to thank God for his privilege. I want to thank God for his grace, rather, for my life. Um, it just started like a joke, and I, I got this um, vision to start loving yourself without even knowing what to say. And then each episode, God tells me what to say. And if you go through uh, episode one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you'll see us metamorphosing every single time. It has been a time of refreshing. I am blessed, and I know you are blessed. I want to thank all those who have been supportive, all those who have been praying. First of all, I want to thank my spiritual mother, my general overseer. I represent Sharma Christian Ministry, and I'm a I'm a pastor there, so I won't fail to thank my spiritual mother, my general overseer, and Bishop Elizabeth, probably, for her prayers, for her directions, for, for always being there, for her counseling. She told me the other day, I am proud of you. You're doing a good work. Keep it up. I want to say, Mommy, thank you very much for having my back. I also want to thank my dad. My spiritual father, I want to thank him. He has been following this show. And I want to say, Daddy, thank you very much. Thank you for the trainings. Thank you for believing in me. Right from a child, you saw something and you believed in me. I want to say, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And also, I want to say, thank you for following. Thank you for watching. Mommy, thank you very much. God bless you. And also, I want to also want to thank my husband, who has also been supportive. I want to say thank you for being there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the sacrifices. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the teachings. Thank you for the advice. Thank you for the word. I used to call him my Bible dictionary. Most times I want to preach, but I don't know where it is. I will just say, hey, where is it in the Bible? Pew. And they will tell me where it is. So thank you very much for everything you do for the family and for Christ. Thank you and God bless you. My children for supporting. I want to say thank you very much. And my sisters, my siblings, all of you. Putting in one word or the other. Loving yourself, loving yourself. NK, Reverend Kajima, you're doing well. I want to say thank you. I'm grateful. You know, whatsoever you don't appreciate, you lose it. So I formed this habit of always thanking people who are always there were always contributing to my life so i say thank you and all those watching wow i can see you at the end of this um podcast i'm going to recognize you i can see all those tuning in right now thank you for coming online thank you very much i'll call your name later at the end of the show for all my vvips in the house my facebook friends my family over here you guys rock my world thank you very much for tuning in thank you for the shares thank you for the likes thank you for the comments i really really appreciate you thank you very much and god bless you we good in the mighty name of jesus amen so this is loving yourself and before we go any further as our tradition is we have to pray so that 
God can direct us on what to do today. So please, wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, wherever you're viewing from, we are here in Nigeria, but wherever you're viewing from in Nigeria and the other states, wherever you are, please just give us a time in your workplace. Let's just pray and begin. Father, we give you praise. Lord, we thank you because we know that you're the author and the finisher of our faith. We thank you, O oh God, because every single time, every single day, every single hour, every single minute and second, as the time is ticking, you have always been there with us. We want to say thank you. Father, Lord, we want to thank you especially for loving yourself for keeping us for these 10 weeks we are grateful we are here again lord we are here to receive more guidance we are here oh god to speak at you as your mouth space we are here oh god to say what you have for us father lord we pray oh god that you will use our voice today in the mighty name of jesus we ask lord that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened for us to see the hidden truth in your word in the mighty name of jesus father we pray and ask lord that whosoever is here when the sound of of our voice whosoever has been broken uh, the needs me needs to be mended the broken hearted you are the one who mends the broken hearted even as your word comes forth may it comes to come with life may it come with strength in the mighty name of jesus whosoever oh god needs direction and life we pray that you will give such person the direction they need in the mighty name of jesus father we ask oh god that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened may we know oh god the hidden truths in your word in the mighty name of jesus Thank you, Lord, because we know that you will see us through today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. If you are here with me, just please type amen, 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 amen. Type, type, type so that I know that we are following. Hallelujah. Wow, loving yourself, loving yourself. And this is episode 10. That means God has been with us from episode 1 to episode 10. So what is loving yourself all about? We always give a recap of what we've been doing so that our new um, new viewers can always um, follow us. So loving yourself is all about loving God, loving yourself, and loving your neighbor. In this, um, in this live broadcast, we teach ourselves how to love God, how to love ourselves, and how to love our neighbor. And we say something that it is a foundational error for you to love anybody in this planet Earth more than you love yourself. Why? Because you can't give out what you don't have. You must first of all love yourself before you can love others. And also you can't love yourself if you don't know God. God is love. God is the originator of love. So for you to be able to love yourself, you must first love God. The Bible speaking in 1 John chapter 4 verse 7 to 8 said, Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God and anyone that loveth must know God, must be born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God for God is love. John 3 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his beloved son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So it is a foundational error for you to love your neighbor without loving yourself. The Bible speaking to us in Matthew chapter 22 verse 37 to 40 where loving yourself came from. Jesus speaking says, Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophet. You see it? God commands us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. So it is a foundational error for you to say, I love my neighbor, I love someone, without you loving yourself. You can't give what you don't have. A lot of people are hurting those days and going about hurting others because they're just giving out what is in their inside. Obviously, out of the abundance of the heart, the mass picket. And you see, when you go around and you don't have God first in you, you can't love your neighbor. Hallelujah. So... For you to be able to love your neighbor, for you to be able to love yourself, you must first love God. So this is loving yourself and that's what it's all about. Loving God, loving yourself, and loving your neighbor. This is episode 10 and before we go further, I want to give a brief recap of what we've been doing on the other season. Now, um, in our previous episode, we spoke on loving God and we said loving God means putting God first. 
in everything we do putting god first placing god above everything everything in life making sure you know that god is first then we say something in that episode that how can you love a god who is love himself how can you love someone who created love and we said the only way we can love god is by submitting to him is by submitting to his authority is by saying yes sir wherever you lead me i go i remember in that episode i sang a song by chidima wherever you go i will go whatever you say i will do jesus the son of god jesus the son of god wherever you go i will go whatever you say i will do jesus the son of god jesus the son of god so when you come to that point when you say yes sir to god whatever you say you're not questioning god you cannot love god and you question him when god said go this way you go you say stop you stop and we gave an example about abraham that god told abraham to change his name from abraham to abraham and he did god told abraham carry your son and sacrifice your son to me yes sir abraham did not question god to get more about this you just go to our previous episode and everything about loving God is there. And we said, how can you love God? You love God through worship. You love God through fellowship. And we're talking about David. And we said, David is was called a man after God's heart. Because he understood the mystery of worshiping God god he understood what he understood rather what it means to love god through worship and all through the psalms you see david giving all to god pouring all to him you can hear him saying as the day pants for water so my soul pants so my soul longeth after day he said lord i am nothing i'm completely empty without you david told god that my total dependence rests on you so david understood this and that is why you see he was called the man after god's heart so when you're talking about loving God you're talking about submitting to his authority submitting to his way so that was when we were dealing on loving God you can go back to our other episode and you'll find that for yourself then after loving God we went further to loving yourself and we just concluded loving yourself I think the last episode and in loving yourself we said that it is a foundational error for you to love your neighbor or love anyone under this planet earth more than you love yourself you cannot love your neighbor and you hate yourself and we said loving yourself means having a high self-esteem having a high self-esteem and celebrating your identity knowing who you are and who you are in Christ knowing that Jesus Christ said you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation loving yourself means you know your identity you don't chicken out so we were talking about self-esteem and how to build your self-esteem we said a lot of our youth and a lot of our young people have gone through a lot of mess because of low self-esteem we said in that episode that we have high self-esteem low self-esteem and excessive self-esteem and we said high self-esteem is when you know and you celebrate your identity you know who you are you know what you represent you don't just chicken out you don't because someone said follow me to this place I will give you money or that and you just fall pour yourself down no and we gave examples of Joseph we said Joseph wherever he found himself he knew his identity when Pharaoh and um, Potiphar's wife came to tell him to bow down to her to tell him to 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 to, to bow down to her whatsoever it is joseph told her that i cannot do this great harm before my god yes he was number one in the house he said my master placed you above me so i cannot do this joseph knew his identity he knew he knew the kind of god he was serving so he did not allow himself to bow down and we talked about the three p's of joseph from the pit to the prison to the palace and in every sphere of his life he always put god's first he always says god is the one that has brought me thus far even when he got to the palace to interpret dreams he told uh, uh, pharaoh he said my god we give pharaoh the interpretation of his dream so we're talking about loving yourself you knowing your identity you having a high self-worth low self-esteem on the other hand means when you feel you're worthless 
you feel nothing good can come out of you i will say that is very very bad you feel that ah, i need to belong to this club i need to belong to these people you feel you, you feel that um unless you 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 like the applause of men you don't feel anything good of yourself you feel unworthy and we say that is what happened to most of our girls today so someone looks at you and say ah oh, you're beautiful and you say am i fine you begin to blush and you say follow me i will give you this i'll give you that and a lot of our girls have been raped a lot of them have been exposed to abortion um um, uh, pregnancies and some of our guys have joined courts because of low self esteem and we said that is not good to eradicate self low self esteem we said you must first of all know your words know who you are in christ come to the knowledge of christ and celebrate your identity praise the lord we gave examples of people that had low self words in the bible we say how you know them is by what comes out of your mouth when they are talking you could just know that this person have a low self esteem we talk, second about when the Bible says in Psalms 1 verse 1 it says blessed is a man that does not sit or stand or move in the counsel of the ungodly we say there are people that come into your life or you 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 you, you talk with once you leave there you just see all the, your self-esteem going down you ask you to ask yourself what what is wrong with me so we are advising ourselves to be careful of our association hallelujah and we gave examples of the spies the spies that um, we are sent to look at the, the the promised land when they came back they said something they said that um moses we cannot take this land they said we saw ourselves as grasshoppers that we cannot take the land that we were like grasshoppers that the land is a land that eats its own inhabitants they had a very low self worth of the same imagine you calling yourself grasshopper eh but we saw people like caleb and joshua they said something they said we are able to go up and take the country to possess the land of jordan to the sea though the giants may be on our way to hinder god will surely give us victory only move on to the righteous side move on to the righteous side move on to the righteous side with god hallelujah move on to the righteous side move on to the righteous side move on to the righteous side with god hallelujah this we are the words of joseph and caleb when you face confronting situations when you face a mountain when you face a big problem you meant to say we are able we are able to go to overtake that country we are able to take over so we said this spies had a low self esteem we also learned how to how not to have excessive high self excessive self esteem and excessive self esteem we said it means pride i'm trying to give a recap for those joining us i will be on a good page we said pride and we said pride 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 go ahead before you fall god god resisted the proud and give it grace to the humble we spoke about people like king nebuchadnezzar this was what we did last week that's our last episode we said nebuchadnezzar was so proud he said come and see the city of babylon that i did with my own power and we said that when he he did that god made him a human being to become an animal he was in the white forest for seven years he was eating grass god reduced him to an animal and we said you don't need to wait till you're being reduced or you're being demoted wherever you find yourself before you come back to your senses pride go away before you fall that will not be your portion in the mighty name of jesus and we said conclusively how can you get rid of excessive self-esteem whenever god gives you a success whenever you are successful whenever you improve always give the glory to god you giving the glory to god makes makes you to get rid of excessive self-esteem so god resists the proud but give it grace to the humble god will give you grace this week for you to excel in the mighty name of jesus amen so today we are talking about loving your neighbor tell someone loving your neighbor if you're hearing the sound of my voice say loving your neighbor loving your neighbor who is your neighbor the word neighbor can be divided into different um two different old english words which means ne and gabor that means the name means near and the word gabor means dweller so together this creates the word neighbor which means someone who dwells near so there is always someone near 
there is always someone near you that God wants you to love. So neighbor means someone who dwells near you, someone who is around you, someone who you will meet in, on this journey of life. So there is always someone near you that needs your help. There's always someone near you that God wants you to love. I don't know how the Bible says in the book of Matthew 22 verse 37, it said, Thou shalt love the Lord with all your heart, all your strength, all your mind, and thou shalt love your neighbor as you love yourself. So God expects us to love our neighbor as ourselves. It is really, really, really expedient that we as Christians, we as believers, wherever you find yourself, you show someone love. There is always someone, as I said earlier, near you that needs your help. There is always someone you will meet by the way or in this course of life that needs something from you. It is a foundational error to love God and hate your neighbor. I repeat myself, it is a foundational error to love God and hate your neighbor. Remember, you must love your neighbor as you love yourself. That means you can't give what you don't have. Firstly, you have to love yourself. As, as you love yourself, it not translates for you to give it out to your neighbor. Any man or woman that doesn't give love will soon expire. If you can't give out love, you will soon expire. If you're always just yourself, 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 very soon you will not even have that yourself again. So any man or woman that doesn't give out love will soon expire. Freely you have received, freely you give also. God loved us. God loved us freely. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 10 verse 8. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely you give. It takes genuine love to heal the sick. You cannot see someone on the way or you see someone around you and the person is sick and you just go and heal the person if you don't have love. When we're talking about sick, we have people around us that are sick both physically, spiritually and mentally. Now you, you, you can say maybe I'm not a pastor, I'm not a bishop, I, I'm, I'm not a prayer warrior, but there is some something you can do to heal the sick. There is something you can do to your next neighbor. So it takes genuine love for you to heal the sick. It takes genuine love for you to talk to someone. When you talk about the sickness in the mind, there are a lot of people in our world today that are sick upstairs. They just need someone to talk them and bring them from that mind state. They are poor in their brain. So that's a sickness that needs to go out of them. And you are over there. God has blessed you with wealth of knowledge. You can use that your wealth of knowledge to reach out to someone who is sick mentally. And the person can be saved the person can be saved when you do that you're loving your neighbor glory to god hallelujah hallelujah god loved us first and expects us to love one another it is the expectation of god that we love one another why we are yet sinners the bible says that christ died for us why we are yet sinners why we are nothing god commended his love towards us romans chapter 5 verse 8 the king james version says but god commended his love towards us in that why we we are yet sinners christ died for us when we were nothing when we felt on love when we have disgraced god we have disappointed god we were just there in the mess that adam and eve brought to us why we were there unloved christ died for us the niv version of romans 5 8 said but god demonstrated his love his own love for us in in this way that while we were still sinners christ died for us god loved us with an unconditional love bible says in john 3 16 for god so loved the world that he gave god so loved the world that he gave god has freely given us love so he demands from us to love our neighbor he demands from us which we, when we are accepted this love his expectation is that we also love one another glory to god any life void of the love of god ends in destruction any man or woman on this planet earth that has not accepted the love of god you are on your way to destruction but i pray for all those hearing my voice that will not be your portion in the mighty name of jesus any man that does not give love knoweth not god beloved let us love one another for love is of god God and anyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. First John 4, the 7 to 8. Any man or woman that does not love knoweth not God. Hallelujah. I repeat, any man or woman that does not love knoweth not God. Glory to God. I'm trying to set a boundary around what we are going to be discussing about loving your neighbor because the next episode and like um the episode that will be coming up will be talking about loving your neighbor. So I'm creating 
um, a good environment so that when we we proceed, we will just go in the, with the speed of light, but you understand what we're talking about. So any river that is not flowing will soon be useless. If you are a river and you are not flowing, you will soon be useless. If God has deposited love inside of you and you put it to yourself alone and you don't put it, you don't share that love with your neighbor, you will soon be useless. The Bible says, any tree that is not fruitful will be cut will be cut down because it, whenever the river for example it's not you it's, it's not um flowing you go to the river stream and that river just keeps on receiving keeps on receiving and it's not flowing very soon that river will become useless you see the things in the river begins to die you see your spiral jewel you see and um, uh, non-living things in that river when you go you cannot take water from the river it smells it irritates it brings the river that is meant to be refreshing now begins to bring sickness that's what happened when you have so much love within you and you don't give it out to your neighbor you don't share your love up to your neighbor you don't allow the love of god to reflect in your neighbor you begin to become useless that will not be your portion in the mighty name of jesus any tree that is not fruitful will be cut down there is something you possess no matter how small that you can go a long way to be a blessing to your neighbor there is something in your inside no matter what it is some people will say i am not a pastor i don't have money i don't have what it takes to love my neighbor hey yeah if i become the president if i become the governor if i become the senate okay i will buy indomie i will buy goods i will give to my neighbor there is something you possess there is something inside of you that you can give to that neighbor that person staying close to you or that person you meet on the way just a little smile a little encouragement a little how are you doing a little don't mind it's gonna be well in these are uh, times and 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 um in times and season in the society and we are having like cashless economy people are going through a lot people are going through a lot so there was one of my staff working with me today told me how she had to trek from 4 a.m to to the house just to work because there was no money not as if she doesn't have money she had money in her account but she could not even withdraw there was no money the eos was not dispensing cash so she had to wake up as early as 4 a.m and trek and trek god when i heard this money i almost cried she said there was no money and that is what is happening in society right now i just had to tell her it is well with you i would say so what are we going to do what is the way forward i started discussing with her i said that's discussing with her i had to tell her okay don't mind go to the kitchen have you eaten go there get something for yourself and eat just relax just relax a little before you start to walk then i see her coming back to life i have showed her love you must not have the whole world before you show love that person walking with you that person on the street that man you see somewhere needs love you just have to show a little kindness you have to show the world a little light in the face of darkness that you should be the light that will shine so that smile that encouragement that word of comfort that happy hands that resources that money if you have that clothes that you're not wearing that clothes that you may not need that shoe that is the answer to someone's prayer. Glory to God. Loving your neighbor is all written in you. It is not just specific to money. It's not just specific to you have the whole world. That thing you have within you, someone needs it. That smile, someone needs it. That it is well with you. That I love you. That you, you know you are great. Do you know you are the best? That alone can put up a spark in someone's life. I pray God gives us more understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. May God give us the grace and open the eyes of our understanding to be sensitive to people around us. May God make us to see. A lot of us are walking, but we are blind. We are walking as if we are not living on this earth. You're just on your own zone. You see someone by the roadside, you cannot assist. You see someone, you cannot speak a word. Some of you even enter a taxi or a, a bus, and you cannot talk to the next person next to you. May God give you the grace and open the eyes of your understanding to be sensitive to your neighbor in the mighty name of Jesus to love others and our neighbors very well we have to be filled with the love of God first I said earlier you cannot give what you don't have for you to be able to love your neighbor with this kind of love you have to have love first our hearts our souls our mind must be transformed and focus on the Lord before we can even talk, talk about loving our neighbor selflessly and intentionally loving your neighbor is a selfless and intentional act it 
he delights the Lord when we strive to love our neighbor. God is happy when we want to love our neighbor. He's happy to see his children mimicking his character. God is love. And when he sees you loving your neighbor, he is happy. He is happy that your godly character is being developed. If we are displaying this love, of God in the lives of others, it leads to sanctification and satisfaction. Number one, sanctification and satisfaction in our life. It is not the will of God that any should perish, but it is His will that all should come to repentance. Glory to God. I hope someone is getting something. If you're following me, please, I just want you to write something. Let me know that you're here. I can see all those watching. At the end, we are going to recognize you and appreciate you. Second Peter 3 verse 9 said, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises, as some understand slackness or slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but that all should come to repentance. Very soon in the course of this um, uh, broadcast, I'm going to give you our case study today. It's going to be on the good samaritan you're going to see how to love your neighbor from the good samaritan how that man demonstrated love glory to god now before we go into that i want to tell you how can you love your neighbor how can you love your neighbor if you're writing take this down number one you love your neighbor by showing kindness by showing what kindness there's a song we used to sing in those days uh, let me see if i can still remember it uh, they just just go along with me it says show kindness it said if you see your brother falling by the way with a lot of loads from the city sword and if you see your sister walking by the road just stop and say you're going the wrong way you've got to show a little kindness show a little kindness shine the lights for everyone to see you're talking about showing little kindness if you show little kindness just little kindness shine the light for everyone to see in the world of narrow-minded people in the world of narrow-minded people in the world of blindness in the world where people have eyes but they cannot see if you can just show a little kindness if you can just try it try a little kindness it will go a long way to make this world a better place for you and for me hallelujah so how can you love your neighbor number one by showing kindness number two by giving 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 and some people may say i don't have money i said earlier you can give your time you can give your smile you can give words of um encouragement you can see someone there that is so downcast speak to that person that's also giving you can give money you can give your clothing proverbs 3 28 says do not say to your neighbor go and come tomorrow when you have what to give in this verse a neighbor is someone who asks for help. When you see your neighbor and the person is in need, don't say, go, 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 come tomorrow, I'm going to help you, you know, you know, you know, you know, or bow down, let me pray for you. If you can help that person, help that one. So you can love your neighbor by showing kindness, by giving, number three, by caring, number four, by listening, always having a listening ear. Someone just needs someone to listen. Someone needs someone to just hear and just pat them on the shoulder. That's also love. You can love your neighbor by forgiving giving a lot of people are hurting by forgiving a lot of you your um parents or your uncle someone has done you something in the past and because of that your heart is like ah i can never forgive that person you're just cheating yourself release that person you love your neighbor by forgiving by praying by praying for people around you when you do so you see god begin to remote life i pray that god gives us understanding and give us the grace because i tell you it's not easy we have a lot of wicked people around us and because of the things that many people have gone through in life maybe someone that you've Try to help someone and it backfired or it boomerang back to you and you're like i'll ah, never again never again everybody is like that let me tell you even as the bible says, be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove yes people can be so bad but yes if you're sensitive you will see people who genuinely need your help who genuinely need your love i pray that god opens our eyes in the mighty name of jesus amen so our case study for today 
we be the good samaritan and there are a lot of lessons for us to learn from the good samaritan and i want us to open our bibles to luke chapter 10 verse 25 to 37 i'm going to take my time to read it and i will point out the lessons and we'll see how god will help us before we close for today hallelujah the good samaritan Luke chapter 10 verse 25 say on one occasion an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus Tisha he asked what must I do to inherit eternal life what is written in the law he replied how do you read it now he answered love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself Jesus answered said you have answered correctly go and do all this and you will live verse 13 29 but he wanted to justify himself so he asked Jesus who is my neighbor Jesus in reply said to him a man now listening to the story of the good Samaritan Jesus said to him a man was going down from Jericho, Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers they striped him of his clothes beat him and went away with everything he had leaving him half dead a priest happened happened to go through that way he got went through the same road and when he saw the man he passed by the other side can you imagine so also a levite when he came to the place and saw him passed by the other side but a samaritan as he traveled came where the man was and when he saw him he took pity on him i paused there when i was talking about love i said even when it talks about healing the sick this man was a sick man because he was just dying i said you cannot heal the sick if you don't have compassion on the person you cannot heal the sick you cannot you cannot do good you cannot love your neighbor if you are void of compassion he said this man when when he saw this man the Samaritan man when he saw this man by the roadside he took pity on him he went to him and bandaged his wounds we don't know how long this man had been there maybe he has been smelling because they say a lot of people saw him the priest the Levite all those who are meant to be good highly placed people um, in, in our time we call them those bishops those clerics and the rest of them they say they pass by it is not just religion he said there are a lot of people in the Christian faith today that they are practicing religion. They are not practicing Christianity. Because when you're talking about real Christianity, it is called love. He said the, 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 the um the disciples were first called Christians because the people saw that they were living like Christ. That was how Christianity came about. It's called Christ-like. They saw them that they were emitting and everything they were doing were just like Christ. And who is Christ? Christ is love. So when you say you're a Christian and you are you you, you don't emit that love that comes from God, you're not a Christian. You're practicing religion. So these priests and the Levites they saw him on the road and they just left him. So we don't know how many days, how many how many weeks that man must have been there gasping for breath trying and crying and just wishing god that someone will help him but a samaritan came by he had compassion he had pity on this man and the bible said not minding how long the man has been not minding whether he was smelly or not he bandaged his wounds poured oil and wine on him then he put the man on his own donkey he knew that this man was weak he first of all bandaged his wound he not poured oil to make sure the wound is okay then he gave him wine wine represents strength he gave him wine so that the man can have the strength to even climb on his donkey how many people around you that need a little oil how many people around you need wine they just need something little for them to go on just a cup of water how many people are just there around you that are dying in test they just need Need something very small so that they can just put on the many pieces of their life together this man didn't just leave the man like that maybe if he had just put the man on the donkey the man would have died even on the way but he acknowledged that is what is called sensitivity i want christians and those young about my voice when you see issues you begin to say god open the eyes of my understanding let me know what to do part time give me the wisdom to handle every situation and life challenges that come my way this man knew that this man needed to be bandaged he knew that he he didn't, he, don't, he didn't just have to carry the man, put on his donkey and go away. What if he had died on the way? He knew the man has been there for a long time. So what he did was to treat the wound first. That's God's first aid. 
he gave him first aid treatment then he gave him a little wine to drink to give him strength then he now put him the man on his own donkey not another donkey you could imagine how costly his donkey might have been you could imagine how neatly placed the donkey might have been he did not care whether this man st um, stained his donkey or not because he had compassion because he had love when you have love on your inside there are a lot of things that will be happening around you that you will not pay attention to you will not pay attention to some details because there is love in you this man was not saying ah this man i will choke you today do you know that this man that was falling on the water was a jew and jews have no good intention towards samaritans good jews they don't relate with the samaritans the jews they don't even use their eyes to see the samaritan now this was a jew that was lying helpless now the priest that passed was a jew the levi that passed was a jew they saw their fellow brother on the roadside almost dead they did not look at him how how many of us today, even Christians, how many of us are functioning the same way like the um priest and the Levi? How many people have you seen that God has brought to your way? But because your eyes are so blinded, you have eyes, but you cannot see. You have left them, you have left them to just die like that. There are a lot of people that are dying, both physically, spiritually, emotionally. Slowly, slowly, they may be living, but they are walking like living cops. May that not be said that God brings someone your way for you to bring the person back to life, to show the person a little kindness, to show the person love, and you allow that soul to be wasted before you talk about salvation before you talk about winning a soul to Christ you must first of all know what the person is going through and show the person love this man was a Jew the Jewish people passed him by but the Samaritan looked at him had pity upon him gave him wine put the man on his donkey brought him to an inn and took care of him how many people are you determined this year to take care of the Bible says in verse 35 that the next day he took out two dinaries that is coins or money in their own terms and he gave it to the ill keeper mind you let me shock you this Samaritan was not just walking on that way he was on a journey he was going somewhere else but when he saw this man in a very bad state in a very deadly state he had to cancel his own plan he had to say my journey can wait for a while let me attend to this soul let me have compassion on this person he had to put his own appointments his own dealings on a hold how many people have God brought your way but because you are so busy and preoccupied by what you are doing you have allowed those people to go this man now he did not just go you know what he did he paid for someone to take care of this man before he proceeded to his own journey may god give us the grace to locate neighbors around us that need help to locate people that will cross our path in this life journey that need our help and to attend to them wisely in the mighty name of jesus the bible saying in verse 35 the next day he took out his money and gave them to the ill keeper look after him he said he said look after this man he was treating this man as if the man was his brother he was treating this man, I think the man was his uncle. He was treating this man as if the man was his father. How many of you can be able to treat a total stranger the way you will treat your own relatives? He said, Look after this man. He paid this the, the, the ill keeper and he now returned. Look after him, he said. And when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Can you imagine love? It is a love that you have within you that will help make you to even give out your money. If you cannot remove your money to help someone that dying then you have no love it's first of all love before you can give it is a love that will make you to give the bible says in john 3 16 for god so loved the world that he gave love comes before giving giving does not come before love if you want to give someone you must first of us have love those who give before they love always have interior motive they say about a man as I was talking earlier in other episodes, I said, a boy may tell a girl right now, come on, give me your body or give me this whatsoever. He buys her handset and buys her this, all with the intention of sleeping with the girl. That is not love. When you want something is any exchange, something you want someone some, some benefits, stuff like that, that is not genuine love. You see this man, he said, Take care of this man. He doesn't even know where the man is from. He doesn't even know where his relatives. He said, if there is any extra pay, I will reimburse you. I pray that God opens our eyes and may God help us to show someone around us what it means to love in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, the verse says, he said, Jesus now asked this man, say, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert in the law 
replied the one who had mercy on him jesus told him go and do likewise what am i talking about the samaritans have no dealings with the jews but you see this man because of love he kept all those religions book sheet, book sheets, all those religions nonsense and he said this soul must not die and he treated him well do we have religion segregations this day? What is it in your family, in the nations? What is it that is making you not to show someone kindness? Let me let you know. For God so loved the world, God did not come to die for one particular kind of person. God's love was not just for this class of person. God loved the whole world. It is his, it is his intention that everyone in the world comes to repentance. He said, the Lord is not, I will read it later, earlier in, in, um, in second peter that the lord is not slow some of you that have been praying ah die by fire die by fire that this uh, that evil man die that if everybody die who will now remain god will always want that soul to repent and we more so for him for the kingdom of god i was talking to people the other day about abattoir there's a movie by the manzayo ministry abattoir there was a man there that was very wicked he was a cultist he was very very bad but you know what happened everything the man did not die god was looking for his soul and god went all the way even when the devil thought it's bad god went all the way to use the bad of the devil to turn it into good the bible says we know that all things work together for good for those that love god and those who are called according to his name so whatsoever bad situation that you are going to right now whatsoever it is whatsoever it is that has hurt you in the past past whatsoever has changed your orientation are you saying i cannot love my neighbor i can please i beg i beg i beg i don't want problem in this world what's Whatsoever it is, I pray for you today. That same situation, God will turn it to your good in the mighty name of Jesus. As you intentionally and sacrificially begin to dish out love for your neighbor, love for those around you. God will satiate the heart of man. God will is himself as love and know that you are doing it out of a lovely heart. The Lord will make all things work together for your good in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If you're following me, I just want you to type amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God will make everything turn out for your good in the mighty name of Jesus. So before we go on, I want to summarize the parable for us to understand it better. So when Jesus Christ explained that the way to eternal life is to love God and love our neighbors as ourselves, he was questioned about the definition of who is my neighbor. Jesus was explaining to the expert in the law when we read earlier from the passage that this man asked him, who is my neighbor? Jesus now used this parable of the Good Samaritan to explain what being a neighbor entails. At this time, the Samaritan and the Jewish people, they don't associate, I said that earlier, they don't have anything to do in common. They don't have anything. But there was a Jewish man who was striped naked, who was beaten, who was robbed, and who was left half half dead on the road. He was lying helplessly. He was ignored by those who are meant to help him. He was ignored. There are a lot of people that have said, I will not go to church again because uh, I was a Christian. I went to this church. I went to there. And those who are meant to help me did not help me and stuff like that. This was some of the case of this man. He said, those who are meant to help me. They ignored him. We have a lot of religious people these days, those who don't really practice Christianity. And now I want to put this in two ways. And there are a lot of people who just come to church because you just want to be helped. They help you today, help you tomorrow. And you're just coming, helping, 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 helping. When you have been helped or loved, God demands of you that have been helped to boost yourself up so that you can help others. Don't always be on the helping side. Don't always be the one that is the needy. You also be the one that will be the giver. Because the Bible says it is more blessed to give than to receive. So to people that will say, I went to this church, they did not help me. I went to the other church, they did not help me. In fact, these church people, you yourself when will you help someone else so this message is in two ways there is a part of the church to play and there is a part of the individual to play so this man was not was ignored by the priest passing both all of them but the person that people did not even did not even expect to help him the good samaritan he was the one who stopped and helped this man thus being a true neighbor now i want to tell you the moral lessons for us to learn the parable of this good Samaritan teaches us several lessons, but in all, it teaches us 
it's a message to love one another simple love one another love one another that is it intentionally make it a habit to show someone love show someone love in this world today we have a lot of conflicts we have a lot of mistrust we have a lot of hate we have a lot of things we have some religion fantasy these people are this part this one is this party this one ah we have a lot of segregation even in the body of christ we see a lot of prejudice in our society segregations in our neighborhoods we see people who this this um, associate themselves based on some sets on some sort of self righteous criteria or or um excuses i am not for this person i'm not for this person a lot of things happen this day but in all the message of the, the parable of the good um samaritan tells us despite our our um status despite what we belong to despite the church we belong to despite our religions um um background or whatever the thing there is love your neighbor intentionally god came for all of us intentionally show someone love you your your, your example should be jesus christ your example should not be be one man up there learn from him and show someone love praise the lord and you can say ah, it is not easy even in the time of jesus it was not easy jesus was giving this parable because as i said earlier the samaritans and the jews they had strong beef you know what they call beef misunderstanding they don't see each other it was so so bad they don't even look at themselves but you can see jesus was speaking even if you are a Samaritan. Even if that your neighbor is not a Christian, show someone love. By so doing, you will win the person over. There was something that happened. Um, I want to just talk about this. Um, Jesus Christ showed us an example on how to also deal. Because you see, um, the Jews, they are one kind of Im impossible people. Only God knew how he used to deal with them. But Jesus Christ also met someone to tell you that there was serious problem between the Jews and the Samaritan. Have you heard of the Samaritan woman, the woman at the well? This woman came to draw water. Now, Jesus Christ met this woman at the well. And as a typical Jew, he was not meant to talk with her. When the conversation came, the Jews, the, the woman even ask Jesus you know that uh, the Jews and the Samaritan we have no dealings together look at you asking me for water now we're talking about the parable of the good Samaritan Jesus was the one that cited this parable and it told us how to love our neighbor love your neighbor as yourself it is not about religion or the other the Samaritans and the Jews they have a big religious religion gap they don't look at each other they have this misunderstanding so it was it was so bad that for a priest and a Levi to see this man, who is their brother, a Jew, he was not a, a Samaritan. So everyone would have expected that him seeing his fellow brother on the wayside, he would have shown a little kindness, just as the song that earlier sang said, You've got to show a little kindness, just try a little kindness. Just shine your light for everyone to see. One would have expected that this priest and Levi would have helped their brother, a fellow Jew, who has been beaten and fallen by the wayside. But he didn't. It was someone as a Samaritan that does not even speak with the Jews, that they have big quarrel and as an existing between them. That was the man that helped. So Jesus was trying to tell the Jews that no, you man that came to him, expert of the law, before you have internal life, you you must first of all drop every self self everything that makes you to carry yourself up everything that makes you to feel that you are better than the next person you have to drop it down bring yourself low bring yourself humble yourself before god and help people around you show a little kindness he said even if the priest the levi couldn't the samaritan did and despite the, the beef and the quarrel between them he was the one that helped he didn't just help this man he bandaged his wound he gave him wine gave him wine to, to give him a little strength and carried him on his own donkey it did not matter that the man was bleeding or not he did all this jesus said we should show kindness god loved the world god loved everybody so he expect us as children of god if we actually call ourselves children of god we should have love one to another hallelujah so jesus christ met this woman at the well the samaritan woman the Samaritans were neglected. When Jesus, when Jesus met her there, Jesus spoke to her. Say, come, I will give you of a drink. 
in the book of Luke, and we see how Jesus spoke to this woman. And this woman said, Ah, you know that Jews and Samaritans have no dealing together. Jesus said, If you know who is talking to you, you would have asked me to give you the living water. Because this woman gave a listening ear, she was listening to Jesus. I said earlier that love, how can you show your neighbor love? Sometimes someone just needs a listening ear. Everything is not about money. Everything, I don't have money. If I become the president, if I become the governor, if I become this, if I have some more money, I will share. Into me, I will give, I will give. Everything is not about money. A little smile, tell someone you love. A little, it is well with you. Ah, may the Lord bless you. Ah, just listening to someone, comforting someone goes a long way. Even in this cashless economy, just say, Ah, God will help us. We will come through this together. Speaking those words also go a long way. Check around you. There are people hurting, telling them, bringing them back to life. So Jesus was speaking with this woman, communicating with her. This woman knowing that on a normal day, this Jew, this Jew, this man, Jesus Christ, then she knows it was Jesus. He's a Jew. He's not meant to speak with me, but she listened. And Jesus now told her to go and get her husband and we know the story i don't want to go further to that but jesus said i will give you eternal life and we know how it ended because this woman gave jesus water jesus gave her eternal life and this woman became the first evangelist there are people around you that you are neglecting there are people around you that should be coming to your church there are people around you that god is meant to use wherever you are i don't know those hearing the sound of my voice you may be a pastor you may be someone that is praying to god lord i need someone to help me in my vision i need someone to help me in this calling around me and there is a man close to you that looks as if he doesn't go he did not go to school nothing good can come out of him and you keep on despising that person who knows if that is a person that god wants to use to be the best evangelist to fill up that your congregation who knows if that is a person that god wants to use to turn your story around who knows let me tell you there is everybody in this world needs something i may have money the next person may not have money but the next person may have what i want i may have money but i just need someone to tell me for example i love you the other person may be receiving a lot of loves but the person does not have money who knows if you can just give out some little a little love god may use that person to be to do what you want God to do for you. This woman, after Jesus spoke to her, by communicating to this woman, this woman became the best evangelist. She went and called the whole town to come and see Jesus. Jesus did not need to go and be called. They wouldn't even come because number one, he was a Jew. Nobody will listen to him. But by communicating, bringing himself to talk to this woman, this woman went and began to preach the mother of Christ. As many listening to me right now, by your, by, 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 by the unction and by the grace God will give to you, to begin to look around, be sensitive to your environment, those around you, begin to show love, show love, show love in words and in deeds. As many that you shall do so, God will use them to turn your story around in the mighty name of Jesus. God will use them to fulfill his plans in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So what are the benefits of loving your neighbor? Number one, loving your neighbor via service ushers you to greater rewards. The Samaritan woman gave Jesus water, but she got internal life. Loving your neighbor by giving make you to be like god the bible says john 3 16 despite everything despite all we have done despite all our sins god so loved the world he gave us a son so when you love your neighbor you are behaving like god we are talking about the benefits of loving your neighbor when you love your neighbor you behave like god you're functioning like god glory hallelujah the parable of the good samaritan insist that number one our enemies can prove to be neighbors enemies can prove to be neighbors talking about the samaritan samaritan were the enemies of the jews but this one proved to be a good neighbor even the jews the person that excuse me the person that was meant to be the neighbor of this is a jew that was meant to take care did not so sometimes our enemies can be our true neighbor so don't look down at anybody the lessons that we learn also from this tells us that compassion has no boundary compassion has no boundary you don't say i will i will have compassion on this person or the other person show love show pity number three it also tells us that judging people on the basis of their religion 
or ethnicity will leave you in a dish in a dying dish you don't judge people by their religion or their ethnicity praise the lord you have to love everyone you see if we can say ah we expected the um the levites or the priests to show this person love but they didn't god use god can use anyone to save a soul praise the lord so these are some of the benefits we let the lessons we learned from the parable praise the lord now also there are five lessons that I want you to also learn from the Good Samaritan. Number one, for those that are writing, love your neighbor as you love yourself. It means loving everyone, loving everyone. The Samaritan was love. Samaritan man showed that you have to love everyone. John chapter 13, verse 34 to 35. The Bible says, a new commandment I give to you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. So by so doing, men shall know that you are my disciples. If you love, if you have love one to another. God expect us to love one another. He said a new commandment. You know, in those days, in the Old Testament, they say an eye for an eye, a tooth for a to this if they, your neighbor do you they do it that but jesus came and told us that this is a new commandment love your neighbor when you do so men will know that you are my disciple when we wish out to people with genuine love intentionally we show people we show the world that we love god we show the world that we don't have hate on our side if you're giving us hate that means what is in you is hatred you don't have love you have to push your heart praise the lord number two helping the person who needs help is helping Christ. When you help someone who is in need, I want you to know some of the lessons from the Good Samaritan so that we can apply it to our life. Number one, loving your neighbor means loving everybody. God gave us this commandment that we should love our neighbor for you to be his, when we know that you are his disciple. Then number two, when you love your neighbor, when you help your neighbor, it means you're helping Christ. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter... 25 verse 34 to 40 then the king will say to those on his right hand come you who are blessed by my father take your inheritance the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of this world for i was hungry and you gave me something to eat i was thirsty and you gave me something to drink i was a stranger and you invited me in i needed clothes and you clothed me i was sick and you looked after me i was in prison and you came to visit me these are all aspects of love as i said earlier it's here in the bible then the righteous we answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and fed you? When did we see you thirsty and gave you drink? When did we see you a stranger invited you or needing clothes or in prison? Then the king will say, truly I tell you, as long as you do to any one of the least of your brothers or sister of mine, you did it to me. So when you lend a helping hand, you feed someone, you help someone, you visit those in prison, you are also helping Christ and you have a reward. Lesson to be that is what matter most is what you do there is there's an adage they say action speaks louder than words don't just be talking 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 show someone love show so this was what this man did we create time some people will say i don't have time this some good samaritan was going on a journey he had a lot of things to do but he had to create time to take care of this man that was that was dead dying on the street we create time for what we value whatsoever you value whatsoever you honor you quit time for it so this one you say i don't have time i am too busy if something is of importance to you and it's genuinely coming from your heart you will quit time for it this good samaritan teaches us that we quit time and we do what is valuable to us praise the lord romans 12, 12 verse 10 niv say be devoted to one another in love honor one another above yourself the Samaritan, likely all these places, everything he has done, he inconvenienced himself to make sure he put this man back to life. May God give us wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus. When God is telling us something, God calls us, he wants us to listen. When God asks us to do something, when he puts a circumstance in our path, he brings a situation, people just pass one, do you sick or whatsoever. He doesn't want us to behave as the priest or as the Levite. He doesn't want us to let obligations or worldly wishes or things around us take a good side of us. He wants us to love our neighbor just the way Jesus has 
ask of us. As we do so, God will give us more grace in the mighty name of Jesus. What matters to Jesus is the action we take in the form of help and support we give to people in need. Praise the Lord. That's what matters to him. Number four lesson, don't let labors fool you. What do I mean by that? Someone is a priest, someone is a Levite, someone is a, a this thing, highly placed. Don't let all those labels to fool you. The elder of them, the priest, the Levite, pass through this man. God searches the heart. God searches the intention of your heart. You may not be highly placed, but you little things you're doing in secret. I tell you, you have rewards for it. As you keep on helping someone, um, um, God will make sure he gives you the reward you need and give you more grace. Say, so he gives more grace to the humble. God will give you more grace in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to read this for you. Say, most people would feel disappointed to see a priest walk past a blessed person dying on the street. The labor of a priest elevates that person to a high standard in our minds. So we expect the priest to help someone who is being hurt. A priest, by, divi by definition, is not necessarily a Christian. In a similar way, someone whose ideas culture and race are different than yours it's not by definition your enemy when you see people that are not thinking the same way you're thinking they don't have the same religion right that does not make them your enemy it's only by looking at the actions of someone that we can get a glimpse of their true character as i said earlier action speaks louder than any label than words so don't judge a person by their title or by their appearance people are not always who they seem to be the bible tells us to always be careful of wolves in sheep clothing the bible says in um matthew 7 verse 20 by, by their fruit we shall know them people don't always behave it's not by their title it's by their fruits by what they do so you see the priest pass by the liver passed by they did not help this man their food shows that they don't have the life of christ in them he said in matthew 7 verse 18 and verse 20 say a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruits neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruits wherefore by their fruit ye shall know them matthew 7 verse 15 he said beware of false prophets who come in cheap clothing they come to you in cheap clothing but inwardly they are ravening wolves we have a lot of false prophets this day so when you see people and you say ah i expect this from this man see the way you do and a lot of them spoil christianity bible say by their food test every food test every food if there anyone that does not bear good food god say i will cut you down i pray for you that you will not bear negative food so that you will not be cut cut off in the mighty name of jesus our goal is eternal life our goal is heaven i pray for you this day you understand my mind if you have made one mistake or the other or you've entangled yourself by the first prophet or in cheap clothing i pray that god will bring you back i pray that you will retrace your step in the mighty name of jesus i pray that you will bear good food so that you will not be cut off in the mighty name of jesus lessons to be learned number five don't search for a reward now this um good samaritan he was not doing this he didn't, doesn't even know the man he was not doing helping this man for to for the man to pay him back or to have rewards we have people here that want to do something so that you can have favor you want people to uh, know that i am the one that did this i am the one that did that do you know that i was the one that uh, helped this person to become ways and this life do you know that i'm the one that gave this person this platform do you know that i am the come on what bullshit don't do something for every time for reward. The Bible says, seek you first the kingdom of God and all other things shall be added unto you. The good Samaritan did this act of a pure heart. He did not even stay for the man to reward him. He just even paid extra money. So what are the lessons? When you're doing something, when you're helping your neighbor, don't always have this, uh, I want them to pay me back. Uh, let me do this. Praise the Lord. I want to read this for you. There was no obvious benefit for the Samaritan to help the fallen man. Number one, the man was a Jew. He was a Samaritan. They are enemies by, by worldly standards. They were enemies. The Samaritans have no dealings with the Jews. So there was no obvious benefit for him. Our human nation makes us more willing to be inconvenient, to be inconvenienced or help someone when there is a reward at stake. When you know that you have something to get, people are always in here, I want to help, you can even give her your time. But when you know that there is nothing attached, some people just withdraw. Maybe the reward is impressing someone, some people want to impress someone, that is a reward, or bringing attention to yourself. When you know that if I do this good thing, if I do this, if I help these particular people, uh, help people will know that I did this, that's where your reward. Maybe you think our good deeds could bring a financial reward. You know that money is involved, then you go out to do good. 
that is not good. When there is something in it for you, your actions aren't in the spirit of the good Samaritan marriage um, message. The best reward that comes from helping someone when there is the best reward that comes from helping someone when there is nothing in it for you is knowing that your actions are number one pleasing to God by caring for His people. When you have this genuine that what I'm doing, I know that it is pleasing to God and God is going to reward me. That is good. Now God will reward you. Say Certainly, certainly he will reward you. He can use anybody to reward you. But first of all, don't put your mind on what will I get? What will I get? If I give this person now this money, what will I get in return? Praise the Lord. Jeremiah 17 verse 10 says, I the Lord searcheth the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. God, that way some people you do good, but you're like, ah, I've been doing good and nothing good is coming my way. God searches the heart. God is looking at your motive. Where Are you eye pleasers? Do you just want them to know that this is what you have done or you're doing it intentionally for God? God searched the heart. I pray for you this day that whatsoever you lay your hands to do, whatsoever good. I said earlier, the Bible said, be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. That's why we need the sensitivity of the Holy Ghost so that we know those to help and those not to help. You may want to help someone and the Spirit of God may be telling you, no, don't help this person now. You have us to be sensitive because a lot of people have helped people genuinely and they've entered into a problem. So I pray for you today. As God leads you to help, number no one, God will in return be bless you in the mighty name of jesus and your help will not put you in danger your help will not put you into problems your help will not lead to your doom in the mighty name of jesus amen there are some foundations you need to cultivate to love your neighbor particularly speaking there are certain ways we love our neighbors for you to have, know how to love them number one spend time in god's word learn how to spend time with god so that god can open your eyes i was talking about knowing those to help god can really tell you this is what to do let the eyes of your understanding be enlightened spend time in the word of god be filled with the holy spirit ask the holy spirit details about what you want for your life number two pray intentionally pray for those around you if you only have a church pray for your church members pray for those around you pray for those even those your customers just generally pray for your neighbors when you begin to pray like that god will begin to fill you with the needs of others and by so doing god will begin to tell you what he wants you to do and tell you how to go about it don't underestimate the place of prayer when it comes to loving your neighbor may god give us wisdom in the mighty name of jesus number three act by loving your neighbor action speaks louder I shall speak louder than words. First John 4, 7 to 8 says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Action speaks louder than voice. Simply look around you, see the opportunities God is placing around you, wherever you are to love someone. God is faithful. God is faithful. He will not let you to love someone and he will not reward you. We are talking about loving our neighbor. And I know that I have said a lot of things, but I want you to search deep within your heart. I want you to look within your heart. God will be laying in your heart right now that this particular person needs my help. As I said earlier, everything is not about money. Loving your neighbor, you show a little kindness. You can show a little smile. You can give a comforting words. There are people that are hurting especially in nigeria now that we have a cashless society i said earlier of um one of my staff working with me i said when she came this morning to work she said she had to trek from 4 a.m in the morning 4 a.m and she got to my place by seven past seven that means three hours when she was telling me i was almost crying i said you mean what now it's not as if she doesn't have money she has money for to pay her transport but she could not assess the money she went to the pos they were not dispensing cash and she needed to go to work she said ma come and see a lot of people on the road trekking trekking and she's sure that when she got to her own destination they were still going further this is what the society is turning to people are hurting when she came out just looking at her i said ah jesus christ i was i listened to everything she said and i said it's well with you and i asked her a question i said i'm sure you've not eaten go to the kitchen go and carry food and eat she said ma i'll eat it i said just leave it go and eat go and eat first i said you trade for four and you want to start to walk go and, when you are finished eating then you now come and walk so you receive strength i just see her smile that's my a lot means a lot now what have i done by the grace of god i have showed her love for she to 
to even open her mouth to even gist me. That means she knew that I have a listening ear. There are a lot of people around you that want to tell you things, but you just you don't listen to them. Everything is not just a money. Yeah, there are people that need money. You can give your money, you can give your time, you can give, but just to listen to someone and say, I swear with you. Ah, don't mind God will help us. Don't mind God will help us in this country. Oh, don't mind it is where that also makes the person to know that I have hope. I told her, I said there is hope as long as we are alive. I said, just in that scene. This thing that is happening in Nigeria now, very soon we smile. Oh. If God can deliver us from COVID-19, everybody knew how COVID-19 was and the lockdown. Churches were not, we were not going to church. We were even afraid of our children when they go to school. So they had to shut down the school because you don't even know if the teachers had COVID-19 or not. But we don't know in one way or the other. There is no COVID again. God has delivered, has delivered us from that, that season. And I was telling her, I said, she's not true. Ah, COVID even was past this one. If God could deliver us from COVID, we are sure that God will deliver us from what is happening in Nigeria right now. And we believed. And I saw life coming back to her. As she started walking, you could see it. And I was happy. And she was happy. One thing you don't know, when you show love to others, you are happy. And the person is happy. The person gets the reward. You also get the reward. I pray for you today that God will open your eyes to be sensitive that you also know how to use your words you also know how to love so people intention on as intentionally without expecting anything in the mighty name of jesus a conclusion we all have neighbors when we say i wish my neighbor just the way the expert of the law acts we all have neighbors around us they are certainly in our lives it is a command from the Lord that we should love our neighbor we must love our neighbors may may it be our heart cry to the Lord that we love our neighbor just as he has loved us. Why we were yet sinners, why we were nothing, why we were dead in sin due to what Adam and Eve did, why we were yet sinners, God loved us. Despite what he loved us, he sent his son to die for us. He's not even asking us to pay for anything. God expects us to love someone, love someone around you unconditionally. And as you do so, God will bless you. God will reward you in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you all that are listening, but I have a burden in my heart. There are people listening to me here that are just saying, all oh, this thing this woman is even saying, self. I don't even understand. Now, first of all, you may not understand because you have not experienced love. You have not experienced what it means to love. I said earlier, you cannot give love if you don't have love. So I want you, if you have not experienced what it means to love, I want you to come to love. Come to the manufacturer of love. Come to Jesus Christ. God is love. His heart beats every day is that you should come and accept the love that he has freely given to us. He is the one that lives the 19th in chase of the one god has left everything just for you the bible says in heaven there is rejoicing over one sinner that comes to christ wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice if you have not said yes to god if you have not given your life if you have not accepted the love of god this is another opportunity for you god wants to rewrite your story god wants to change your orientation god wants to change your life god wants to give you a better mindset god wants to give you something sweet and something genuine so that it comes effortlessly you don't need to struggle about you if you're here and you want to say yes to him please bow your heads put your hand on your chest and just repeat this prayer after me right now say lord jesus i have listened to your word i believe that you love me i believe i am the one that you died to save i come today in total surrender i come oh god before your throne and i ask for mercy i ask that you forgive me for all my sins i ask lord that you cleanse me from all unrighteousness i ask lord that you will remove my name from the book of death and put my name in the book of life father i ask lord that you oh god will be my lord Lord and my personal Savior. Jesus, come into my life. Thank you for saving me in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory! Hallelujah! Congratulations! I want to let you know that you are the one that this message came for. The Bible says, in heaven there is joy right now for all those who have said this prayer. And for those who will watch this broadcast after now and you will still say this prayer. There is joy in heaven. Heaven is rejoicing for you. There is a sound of jubilation. There is rejoicing. Everybody in heaven is happy just for you because you are the latest VVIP in the house. You have been one to the kingdom of Christ and I want to advise you please do me a favor wherever you are just look for a good Bible believing church I represent Shama Christian uh, ministry we have a center in Port Harcourt I'm not telling you to come to my church 
But if you want to, if you are free, you can come to my church, Shama Christian Center, Port Harcourt. We are located around um, in Serene Road. Or you check my number, you can DM me and I will give you direction. If you need counseling, I can talk to you. If you don't want to come to Shama, you can look for, or maybe you're far, you can look for any good Bible believing church. Please be careful of falsehood. Be careful. There are a lot of wolves in sheep clothing. Don't forget what we learned today. Go to a Bible believing church and there you'll be counseled. There you will be taught the way of God. And God will, will help you through this journey in the mighty name of Jesus. Congratulations once more. I'm happy for you. Hallelujah. And before I bring this to a close, to all those who are listening to the, the, the sound of my voice, I want to say a prayer. I want to have a prayer, prayers for our neighbors. I want us to say this prayer together. I want you to repeat after me. I'm just going to say it out and repeat to ourselves. I will pray that God will give us the grace because it's not easy. I said earlier about forgiving. There are a lot of people that have hurt us and because of that, it's not as if we don't love our neighbor, but we've had some histories in the past and when we look at people on the road, they're like, if I do this now, am I sure? Am I sure? That's why we need the Holy Ghost. But I pray for you today that God will give you sensitivity. As many that intentionally want to love, want to give out to their environment, may God give you the grace in the mighty name of Jesus. So please recite the prayer after me. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to love one another allowing us to love our neighbors for a season or for a lifetime jesus is a gift that we do not deserve father we can only love because you have first loved us so lord we ask you to open our eyes to the needs of those around us open our eyes to the needs of those around us and grant us the courage to serve you in ways that seems hard even in tough times lord we pray that your hands will be upon us give us the grace to serve you in the mighty name of jesus father we thank you for teaching us through the parable of the good samaritan that you have called us to love all people of all races and not just those that look act and think like we do you have called us to love everybody not just those that look or think or act as we do thank you for this teaching today lord we ask that you will mold our hearts and you will do help us to do your will mold our hearts change our orientation give us the grace to do your will in the mighty name of jesus father we pray and we ask oh god that all those who have listened to us today we pray that in blessing you will bless them father as they go into the remaining parts of this week let your hands oh god be upon them lord father oh god even as it has been declared in shama my church we are attend that this month of march is a month of divine direction father let the sweet holy spirit direct them father it has been declared is our month of profiting in everything oh god those following me right now are uh, whatsoever they lay their hands to do in their businesses in their career father i ask oh god that they shall profit in the mighty name of jesus and we say no to stagnations in the mighty name of jesus we ask oh god for progress in this month of divine direction profiting and progress as declared by the general overseer of Shama Christian Ministry International, Archbishop Elizabeth Paul we declare, oh God, that all those hearing the sound of my voice shall profit in the mighty name of Jesus. They shall progress in their businesses to the left, to the right, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you shall restore all the years that the canker one, the palmer one, the caterpillar has stolen from them. We pray that they receive speed in the mighty name of Jesus. Progress in the mighty name of Jesus. Timely intervention is your portion. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen and amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Wow. I want to thank everyone that has stayed up to this time watching us. I want to say thank you very much. God bless you. This is episode 10 and God has helped us. I said earlier when we got this vision to start loving yourself, we started without even knowing what to say. And each episode, God keeps on telling us what to say. So I want to thank the Holy Spirit for guiding us. And for everybody that has been watching, I say thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you. As we leave now, we're going to put this. I'm going. To, I'm not going to delete this post. I'm going to put it so that next time you can and wash it over and over and over please do a favor share this post with your friends those you know need to hear this message if you've been blessed i personally i have been blessed i have been blessed seriously god has opened my eyes to some things and i'm i want to do them 
as I was going to it, I begin to even see my thoughts and I'm going to uh, rewrite them. I'm going to make my thoughts right. So I've been blessed individually by myself and I know you have been blessed. So please share and tag someone that needs this message. As you do so, God bless you. I want to see you in our next episode, episode 11 on Monday. It's going to be something else. It's going to be mind blowing. Come on, what God has for us this season. Oh my God, you have to listen to it. Please tell someone to tell someone to tell someone. And I celebrate you fabulously and lovingly. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. God bless you. Bye for now.